body is connected with the earth, you're protecting your heart, a lot of times right now, emotions are tied to the heart, playing in the position anytime, anytime, you ground yourself down. Upper back, right. On your next exhale, take your hands over to the left. Reaching as far to the left as you can. Touching fingers. Okay. Okay, next inhale, coming back to the center. Then on the exhale, taking your hands over to the right.
Keep your hands back towards your heels. Let your shoulders fall forward. You turn your head to the side if that feels better. Letting the shoulders be heavy. Back to the ground. Hands back towards the top of the mat. Maybe tense the fingers, lift the wrists, lift the elbows, gazing the arms. On your next inhale, coming up to the tabletop. Wrists are under your shoulders, your hands are under your hips. And then going through a few cat cows, inhale, drop the belly. Your exhale, arch back. Long movement, long breath. Spread to the spine. Around. I'm going to inhale, raising your right hand all the way up to your shoulder. And exhale, spread it through, down off of your shoulder. Taking any options that you want, maybe the legs out to the side, and you can move that left arm. Four buttons. On an inhale, bring the leg back in, use the left hand to keep yourself up, right finger to the side. Set it down. Inhale, left finger to the side. Exhale, set it through. Down. Any options? Shoulder to two. Inhale, bringing the right leg in, using the right hand, pushing yourself up, left finger to the rise, set it down. Take some organic movement, whatever feels good, rocking, shifting, rolling out the neck. Back to neutral. On the inhale, slide your right leg back so that your toes are still on the ground, but just slide it back so that your right leg is straight. And then just keep moving. Push into your heel so your legs don't move back. You can push forward and back. Push your leg back and just kind of push into the foot, push the heel like towards the ground, and then you can come back up. A few little Abstract here. A 
and then coming back to your center where you're just up on the toes. Put the weight into your left hand and just open up into a side plank with the knee down. A gentle side plank. Come back to center. Bring that right leg back in. Then send the left leg back on your toes. Push back and forward, stretching the calf. Come back into that neutral where you're just up on the toes. Weight goes into your right hand, lift up. And coming back down in here, tabletop. And tucking your toes, pushing back down, dog. Take the movement, pedal feet, bend knees. Through the fingertips, shoulders are engaged. And then keep your feet as wide as your mat. Take them to the outside edges of your mat and line your heels up. So, a lot of times when we do that, our heels kind of come in. So, make sure your heels are lined up with like your pinky toes. And then you got to keep pushing through your hands so you don't slip. Come up onto your toes. And bend your knees, push your chest back. So you're like in like a squat, but still with your down dog. Yeah. Try to keep your knees wide. Try to keep them as wide as your ankles. And then maybe you straighten your legs. And do that two more times. So inhale up onto the toes, bend the knees, and pull the knees out towards your ankles. You find your fingers want to, and your hands want to slide. Really grip the neck. Exhale, straighten the legs and heels down. One more time, up onto the toes. Bend the knees, pull the knees out towards the ankles. Get the hips back. And then straighten the legs, come heels down. And then you can come back into your regular down dog stance. But maybe you felt that maybe you didn't, but that, um, that actually strengthens your ankles. Like I can feel that definitely in my ankles, especially when you pull your knees out towards your ankles when you're in that kind of squat. So, and I know a lot of people have weak ankles and that sometimes an issue when we're doing balance and things because um, your angles are weak. That's one of the reasons that you have trouble. Same thing with that health. On your next inhale, walking your feet forward to meet your hands. Just holding forward. Grab elbows, sway, rock. Release the hands down. Inhale, slowly coming all the way up to the hands, scooching up, working up. And exhale, hands from the heart center. Closing your eyes. Take a moment. Think of one thing you're grateful for. Open the eyes. Inhale, reach back up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, high plank, and taking your option. Taking a chaturanga if you want, or keep your back down. Inhale, walk.
process for problem is halfway lift and fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Interlace the fingers at the top, leaving your first finger out. Rounding down, checking in. Sometimes when we do these um, crescents, you find your hips are going to go forward or backwards. So try to keep your hips right over your ankles. And then reach up, find length. And then pull over to the right and try to make sure that your hips don't go forward or back. Inhale through center, and then back. <laughs> Find that length again. Hips are over your ankles. Pull over to the left. Try to keep the arms straight. Inhale through center. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, take a flow of back to down. Inhale, walk or float, top of the mat. Halfway lift. And hold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Interlacing the fingers again, leaving the first finger out, rounding down, finding that length, keeping the arms straight. This time it's okay if your hips go forward. If you want, maybe a slight back bend. Keep your arms by your ears. Lifting up and back. And now for seconds. Exhale, pull forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, take the flow, and stretch again. Inhale, walk or float, top of the hand. Halfway lift, and pull. Inhale, coming all the way up. Right leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hip, bringing that heel close to the butt, lifting the knee towards the ceiling. Then straighten the leg, step it forward, between your hands, rotate your left heel down. So your feet are going to be in warrior two feet. So your back foot's going to be parallel to the back of the mat. Your front foot's going to be in between your hands, and you're going to have your And take both hands on the inside of the right foot. And walk them over to the side and forward a little bit. Okay, towards like here at the upper left corner of your neck. Yep. And then just sink into your hips here. This is called a down dog lunge. I feel like it should be called a warrior lunge. And to like broaden and widen the boy. So we like opening up and pushing both sides away from each other. And then on your next inhale, walking into the back the same as front foot. Then opening up the warrior. Opening up. Opening up to the side. Pushing through that back leg, pulling up on your kneecaps. Tuck your tailbone, pull your belly button in, squeeze your shoulders together. On an inhale, flip your front palm, reverse the back. Stay low in that direction. 
then come forward to an extended side angle. Forearm comes to the thigh or down to the floor or block. Try to pull your left shoulder back so that you're opening your chest a little bit more. warrior straight in your front leg as you come back this time big stretch on that right side of the body toes all the way to the fingertips and then reach forward and drop down And then you're going to bend your right knee. Right hand is going to come in front of that right foot. Take your time. Set up for a half moon. Take as many movements as you need to get there. You can bend. Not lift the back leg as high. Dropping your left foot down at the back of your mat. Come up to standing. You can readjust your feet if you need to. Try to take your heels out a little bit further than your toes so that your heels are the furthest part of your body. So the farthest you can. And roll it back. Inhale, take a slight back step. Next, fold forward. You can keep your hands directly under your shoulders so that you don't fold as much if that feels better for your lower back. Or you can take your hands to your ankles or walk your hands to your feet. Push through the pinky toe side of both. Inhale, coming all the way up. And exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Step back. Take a flow, push back to down dog. Inhale, left leg rises. Bend the knee, open the hips. Maybe putting a little more weight into your right heel. Straighten the leg, step it in your hand, and then rotate the right heel down so the back foot is parallel to the back of the mat. Coming into those warrior two legs. And then taking both hands on the inside of the left foot, walk your hands out and forward. Towards the top of the right hand. Broadening through the groin. The thighs away from each other. Up to the tailbone. Walking your hands back to train your front foot. And coming up into your warrior two. Checking it with your alignment, touching your tailbone, pulling your belly button in. Pulling up on the back. Lift your front palm over. Forward extended side angle. Forearm is on your thigh. Really push out of your shoulder. Sink in. Inhale, come back up into your warrior, reverse warrior, straightening your front leg. Then reach. 
reaching forward, dropping down, triangle, tucking that left hip underneath. If your legs are straight, pulling up on the kneecap. Many movements as you need, coming into half moon. It's easier for you to come into it from a different place. Reset. Yeah. Dropping that right foot down to the back of the mat. Come up to standing, maybe readjusting your feet, setting your heels as the widest part of your body. You can take your hands to roll it back again, or if you want, to put your fingers behind you. Inhale, slight back bend. Nice. You can play around with putting more weight in your toes. Prep for mm -hmm. tripod or handstand or headstand. Getting used to having the weight in your toes. Slowly coming up to the knee. Turning towards the top of the mat. Cartwheel your hands down. Step back. Take a flow. Or push back to down low. And now walk and float. Top of the mat. Halfway lift. And hold. Inhale, coming up with chair pose. Taking into your heels. Tuck the tailbone a little. Pull your belly button in inside. Bring your arms back by your ears. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Step back. Take a flow or push back down, down. Walk or float to the top of the mat. Bend your knees, come down onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest, roll around, massage your spine. That whole sequence we did had like hips open instead of like when we do lunges and warrior one, your hips are what we consider closed or like when they're squared to the top of the mat. So because that was all hips open, hips closed, so. Slow your breath, slow your heart rate. Setting up the bridge pose. The feet are consistent, heels are close to your butt. On an inhale, lifting the hips, lifting the lower back, middle back. Always the option to roll onto the shoulders, <laughs> grabbing the edges of the mat, and always the fingers underneath, bending the elbows to the upper arms, all options. Even though you're not squeezing your thighs together, it's that that um, action of squeezing them together, even though you're not. Exhale, 
exhale, release down, feet wide, let the knees fall in on each other. So there's someone in here that asked me about um, squeezing your glutes in bridge. Somebody asked me, and we actually had a discussion yesterday in training. And it's still, because I, my answer was that some people say to do it, and some people say not to do it. And we had a discussion yesterday in training, and one of my teachers says do it, and one of my teachers says don't do it. So it's just one of those things. And it's kind of your choice if you squeeze your glutes at the top or not. I don't know. I think there's no concrete evidence one way or the other if it's good or not. Setting up for bridge again. On an inhale, lifting up. Exhale, release down. Feet come wide, knees fall in. Gotta get the one last rear door wheel, door choice. On an inhale, lifting up. Playing around with this one, maybe reach for your ankles, maybe lift your toes, or lift your heels, find your toes. Exhale, release down. Soles of the feet come together, knees fall out wide. Bringing the knees back up to the floor. Tucking the right ankle over the left thigh. Flexing the foot, lifting the knee away from the body. Even if you want, you can screw through your shin or your thigh. Keep both feet flat, active, stamping the toes. So you're trying to get it like it's, it's closed like this, if you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that'll you feel like a bigger stretch. Just when you do that. Yeah, <laughs> you're super flexible, so you might not. But yeah, by clamping the knee closed, it keeps this like more active, and um, so you should feel it like all in that side. If you can. Like I said, like it, it just depends on your body mechanics and you're super flexible, so you might not feel it anymore. Slowly release down, switching it out, last angle over right thigh, flexing the foot. Pushing the knee away. If you want, reaching through. Bring it closer. Like both feet.
between both knees and the chest. Take one hand on each knee. You can come in big circles opposite direction. Coming into a happy baby, rubbing the outside edges of the feet, the tailbone down. And it's a whole spine on the mat. Back together, opening the arms out to the feet. On an exhale, drop the knees over to the left. To the right. And exhale, drop the knees to the right, to the left shoulder. Taking any left movement from the calming to you. When you're ready, ready to come to the resting position. And when you get there, take the belt of the leaf. Feel the body grounded down again. Here. Back of the body is supported. Front of the body is soft. Rest well into the little squeezing.
Our head's 